page 20, Holy Spirit. Everybody have it? Let us sing. Holy Spirit, will it be? They touch my eyes that I might see all your goodness, grace, and power. Stay beside me every hour. Be my drink, be my living bread. Keep me sheltered. to silence your electronic devices in order that they might uh, not disturb the worship service. Now at this time, I call the worship. Repeat after me, please. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, o Lord my, rock, my rock and my redeemer. 
redeemed. And I redeemed. Is there anyone to make confession at this time? I don't see anyone, so we'll proceed with the scene. Let's notice page 63. Page 63. Restore my soul. Page 63. Restore my soul. <laughs> Restore my soul. If by him, let us say. Restore my spirit, Lord, I need restore. My heart is weary, please help me, dear Lord. I stand in need of more strength from your word. Renew my love, renew my faith. Yeah. 
Let's get the last song before we say a word, right? And read God's holy scripture. Mansion on the ground. <laughs> Mansion, Rose, and Prime, Bacon, 653, seen on page 654. Everybody have it? Let us sing. I'm going to trade my earthly home for a better one, bright and fair.
Let us pray. O righteous and heavenly Father, we bow our heads toward this day. And which, Father, the hands have made. One day, Father, we'll be called away from this place, Father. Yes. And we will go back to the dust of this earth. Yes. Father, but we pray that our souls will be come before your heavenly Father, we be welcomed into thy hand. Yes. But Father, we're mindful that we must be faithful unto the continuance of this life until this life is called away, Father. Yes. So, Heavenly Father, we ask thy blessing upon our souls. Blessing upon each and every one that is here. That we continue to walk and be worthy of thy call, Father. Share thy word of the gospel with the old Father, the lost in this world. Yes. Blinded by the things of this life that is before us, Father, because we have not studied and looked into the things which you have commanded all of us to do. Yes. But, oh, Heavenly Father, we ask forgiveness of our sins. Strengthen us, Father, in our weakness to lift us up, Father, that we may continue to ask for forgiveness of those things in our lives that make us settle from being with them. Yes. But Father, whether we obey you or not, we're going to have to stand before you and give account of the things that we have done in this life. Yes. Amen. And we pray, Father, that our lives be worthy when we go before you. Yes. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask that you be with those that are sick, suffering, those that were mentioned here this morning, those that are going to doctor's appointments and all, Father, we pray that they get a good report. Yeah. Those that are sick and suffering at home, that we mention each week, Father, those on the prayer list, Father, you know them by name. Yes. We may not be able to call them at this present time, but Father, you know which ones are suffering. Yes. And those that are not here for other reasons, Father, we pray that they will look at themselves, look at their life, and see whether or not they have been faithful. Yes. Amen. And Father, that they will come to the knowledge of the truth before the everlasting too late. Yes. We pray for our minister that rides up and down the road to stay to come, to teach, and to guide. Yes. And Father, bring a lesson before that we need to study to carry us through the week, Father, yes. that we yes. may be able to understand and share it to those that are lost in this world. Yes. Father, we ask that you go with the ones that work here. Our elders, Father, continue yes. to stand by them and all the brethren that here that does the things that they need to do yes. to help carry the work forward, Father, that will be pleasing in your sight. Amen. Oh, Heavenly Father, bless this country. We don't know which way it's going, Father, but you know the things that some are doing, Father, they are wrong and people are accepting lies rather than the truth. Yes, yes. And Father, help them, them to yes. come to the knowledge of the truth before the everlasting too late. Yes, because, Father, you said in the world that blind lead the blind. They all will fall in a ditch. That's right. And Father, we know what the ditch is that you have claimed in your word, that the soul of man would not be able to accept it if he is not right. faithful according to your word. Amen. Go with us this morning, Father, and bless us. Bless the whole church, from our children all the way to the young to the old. Father, strengthen all of us in mind that we understand your will more perfectly. Yes. Go with us, continue to guide us. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say, Amen. 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 283. 283.
I saw him take two seven. Two seven of the outside invitation. Saw him go to seven. Go to one and nine. church once again say amen. amen. It is going to be a grand day when we hear him say well done thou good and faithful servant. Amen. I don't know about you but I'm waiting on him amen. to say that. I'm anticipating him saying that and I'm working so I can hear that yes. when all is said and done. As our brothers prayed earlier one day we're going to go that way now yes. and we want to see God in peace when all is said and done. And I don't know about you, but I can only imagine that heaven is going to be grander than anything can describe it as. In other words, if God can make all these great natural wonders that you can see, just think about the Grand Canyon, for instance. Think about Niagara Falls in Canada or the New York side. Think about how beautiful these things are. Now, I believe that uh, heaven is going to eclipse all these things and make these things look minor with all this said and done. So like uh, Brother Mark Thompson used to preach back in Michigan, you know, we fight, we kill, we have war over gold, but we don't walk on the streets of gold, meaning that that's going to be nothing is plentiful unto God. So hopefully... You came here in a good spirit. Did you come in a John 4, 24 spirit today? Amen. Let me ask you this. Did you come in John 4, verse 23 spirit? Amen. That God has to, he's seeking those that are true worshipers Amen. of God. Then he gets into, in verse 24, worshiping in what? Spirit Amen. and in truth. I'm not going to sound arrogant this morning, but I'm going to tell you right now, everybody can't worship God. Man. What do I mean by that? Now, everybody is a true worshiper yes, of God. Right. Because not everybody is listening to Matthew 7, verse 21. Not everybody that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. He 
You see, when people don't know how to conduct themselves in the house of God or masquerade as the house of God when they're not, then they're not true worshipers of God. So they can't even get to John 4, verse 24, that they can't even worship in spirit. And in truth, because they don't have the truth in them. Y'all understand what I'm talking about? Amen. So if you have the truth in you, you need to be excited. Because yeah. I don't know about you, but I get excited the wrong way when I'm lied to. Amen. I get angry at it. Amen. But if somebody tells me the truth about something I like, I joy over that. Amen, God. Amen. And so you ought to be rejoicing this morning that you're in the house of God. I'm not talking about brick and mortar. I'm talking about that you're in the body. Where there is salvation. And can't nobody take that from you. Amen, y'all. See, the, the, the natural process may take your body, but the soul is going to live on. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And going on to eternity, if you stay faithful to death. I'm talking eternity of peace, joy, and everlasting unity yeah. with God. Just think about you being here at worship service as just a sign of what's going to come. Later on, when you get to be with Jesus forever. Because I'm told even right now, if two or three are gathered together, his name, where is the church? Amen. He's in the midst of us. So he's with us right now. Amen. So we always in our heart want to usher in royalty right now. Because we're in the presence of the King of Kings yeah. and Lord of Lords. And we're also in the presence of royalty in all of us. Because God said we're also a, what? a royal priesthood. A holy nation. In other words, we're not peasants and all that kind of stuff. We are somebody yeah. in God's kingdom. So much so that he sent his son to die for us. So we may have a chance at eternal life. So thank you for coming here and worshiping God in spirit and in truth. For your unity in everybody, brothers and sisters alike, for all your contributions. I'm not talking about money here. I'm talking about everything you do behind the scenes mm -hmm. in order to glorify the name of God in your house. In your community and in the name of the Henry Street Church of Christ. Thank you for everything that you do behind the scenes. I thank specifically as well our two elders for their labors. I think it's been, what, uh, 2014 is when they originally were installed here. And so they've been doing this almost 10 years. Believe it or not, time goes by pretty quickly. So we thank them for uh, navigating us spiritually all of these years that God has blessed them to labor here. Thank God for a wonderful wife for continued love and support. And last but not least, if you're visiting with us, we want to let you know that you're an honored guest, and we want you to always come back and worship and fellowship with us once again. Amen. We already embrace you. Amen, y'all. You, know. you already our friend. You already welcome. And we want to make sure you always feel that warm hospitality from us and know that you're 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 uh, welcome to always worship and fellowship with us here today. In other words, we always got a, a spot in a pew for you here. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's nothing compared to a spot in the kingdom, though. Amen, y'all. Because the kingdom is never full. Amen, Amen y'all. Yeah. God always have room for one more yes, to make it unto heaven. Hopefully that's you. If you don't know Christ, you will before you leave this building. Here today. Yeah. Let's go back to Job chapter 1 verse number 7. And I'm using this verse as a springboard. And really as a teaching moment. When it comes to the word of God. Don't feel bad when I make this statement. But sometimes we make some mistakes. Mm -hmm. In our perception of God. Sometimes we put negativity on God. That God does not deserve. Because we have not been educated fully in the scriptures and understand where our trials, our tribulations, our hardships and suffering really originate from. In other words, if I can't get by, if, if I don't mind here getting ahead of myself, sometimes we blame God for things that Satan is actually doing. So that's why I'm going to start in Job chapter 1 verse number 7 to show you who the havoc maker in your life is. Who the drama provider is in your life. And I'm going to show you from the Old to the New Testament. It's not God. It's actually the adversary. Yes, Satan. Job chapter 1 verse number 7. When you have it, you're ready for it. Our New King James Version. Somebody say amen. amen. It says. And the Lord said to Satan. From where do you come? 
So Satan answered the, answered the Lord and said, from going to and from fro on the earth, mm -hmm. and from walking back and forth right. on it. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, we see Satan is still living. Mm -hmm. And where is Satan? Not in hell. Mm -hmm. Where did God say he is? Mm -hmm. He's on earth. Mm -hmm. So that means sometimes he's in the church, yes. Mm -hmm. He'll show up. Yes, he will. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he's at your job. Sometimes he at the store or the post office where you go. Yeah, and sometimes he's in the bed next to you. Amen. <laughs> he walking to and fro where? Yeah, yeah. In the earth. Yeah. Your bedroom has an address yeah, yeah. <laughs> on the earth. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> the church building has an address on the earth. And so does your employment have an address on the earth. So that's why things go haywire everywhere you go because he is going to and fro in the earth, causing havoc. So that being said, I do want to just reorient our mind to the subject today being, if you're going to be angry, directed at the right source, Satan. If you're going to be angry, directed at the right source, being Satan. Now it's going to make sense as we go on forward with it now. Let me take you on a journey here. And I apologize up front if it takes you down a place of pain in your life. But if you will, you'll understand the lesson fully from an experience in your life. Is that all right now? Man. Do I have permission to go there down that road? Man. You see, unfortunately, we as human beings... We often take out our anger and aggression on the wrong people. We often, all of us have done it at some point in our lives, that we have taken out our anger, our frustration on people in our lives that don't deserve it. We have taken our anger out on people that are innocent in our lives that have not done anything to us. But still, they suffer the wrath of what somebody else did unto us. We do that. We're guilty about that as a human race now. We actually take out on those who actually love and care for us our wrath instead of the ones who have actually hurt us. Mm -hmm. Science has a term for that. It's actually two words. They call that displaced anger. Yeah. In other words, you're putting anger in the wrong place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're expressing it in the wrong place. See, unfortunately, some of us know it all too well because of our home life situations. Yeah. Whether it's now or this, whether what we grew up in, we have experienced displaced anger. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me give you a few examples about this sinful aspect of many people's lives. See, again, if this is painful for you, I apologize up front, but we're going to go down memory lane for a minute. Mm -hmm. See, for instance, if you grew up in a household in which perhaps the breadwinner of your house, the father, was one that struggled out in the employment or in the employment field, I should say. In other words, he would have a job one minute, the next minute he didn't. Yeah. That can cause major frustration yeah. in a man. Yeah. See, I don't know if sisters understand this very well, but I think for men my age and everybody pretty much in this room, we are men's men. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all know what that means then. Yeah. We're not like these soft guys. That you run into these days. We don't like those guys that want to stay home and watch and play video games and let their women bring home all the money. We not cut from that cloth. Amen. Huh? We not the type of guys that the temptation talk about Papa was a roller stones. We ain't them type. A man were cut from a different mold, cut from a different generation. And when we would come home after getting the pigs that laid off, we would come home with our heads down. Yeah. Oh, y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. As if we were failures yeah. Yeah. and failed our wives, failed our children. We would feel less than a man if we didn't bring in the money that we're supposed to in order to provide for our houses. Yeah. Huh? However, 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 see, a lot of times us as men, we don't know how to vent that anger the right way. And sometimes when we let Satan get in our hearts, I said it the right way, Satan, mm -hmm. we take it out on the wrong Man. people. Yeah. Yeah. We come home 
And our wives have to go through mm -hmm. all the frustration that has mounted upon us on our job or the job we lost. Yeah. Huh? If you grew up in the area, I think Detroit and Gaston are pretty similar. Mm -hmm. We're both were old manufacturing towns. Yeah. Huh? Where jobs at some point were plentiful. Yeah. Amen, y'all. But sometime around the 70s and around the 80s, here in Gaston, steel plants mm -hmm. huh? started closing up. Man. Yeah. In Aniston, the pipe factories started closing up. Huh? Mm -hmm. In Detroit, the same thing happens. The auto plants. Right. Some move to Mexico. Some move to the to, to the suburbs. Some move to Ohio. All those right. places. So what did it do? It caused massive unemployment yeah. in all of these regions. But it also caused mental illness yeah. among a lot of men. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So unfortunately, instead of fighting back and trying to get back on their feet, they started fighting their wives. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about some real domestic yeah. abuse. Mm -hmm. Huh? The type that a woman would have to sneak out in the middle of the night while he's still in his drunken stupor just to survive mm -hmm. her and her children. Yeah. Because he's beating her constantly. Because of why? What somebody else did mm -hmm. to him that had nothing to do with the wife. Mm -hmm. Had nothing to do with the children that are now abused. But now you got a dysfunctional, not only a dysfunctional household, you got a dangerous household mm -hmm. that people can lose their lives in. Why? Because that man displaced what? His anger. He's taken out on the wrong person. Oh, amen, y'all. I'm going to talk to somebody here. And he tried to medicate himself with alcohol, but alcohol only made him more depressed. And some of these men, when they went through this situation, especially that economic downturn, a lot of our families experienced in days gone past, as Rich is returning to us as well right now, that some of them took one of two routes. Some of them became cowards and walked away from their families to never return, leaving a single mother and child to fend for themselves. Or they will become alcoholics, as I mentioned, come home full of rage, depression, and anger, and beat the families mm -hmm. that loved them. Yeah. In effect, causing a dysfunctional home because they could not deal with the rage built up inside of them mm -hmm. that should have been directed at their employer. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't get it. Uh -huh. And not their family. Mm -hmm. As another example of displaced anger, we can talk about some dysfunctional home situation where a single mother displaces her anger against her own child. Mm -hmm. See, folks, see, Women are emotional creatures. Don't, don't say you lying up here because you know I'm telling the truth. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Don't, don't look at me crazy. Yeah. But women are emotional. Yeah. I've lived with one for 22 years. I know yeah. what emotion is. Yeah. And I know how some sisters just fall apart over some things. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But I also know how some sisters came back together because they faith in the Lord. Yeah. I ain't not here. But I'm being realistic with you. If I'm telling the truth, somebody say amen. amen. Right here, right now. But when a woman doesn't have the Lord like that, sometimes she just places her anger in places she should not as well. Especially a single mother. You see, because a child looks like her father, she represents her own flesh and blood. Because she had a child at a young age. She is angry that she no longer has the freedom of childhood she once had. Yeah. And now the child is abused and neglected mm -hmm. in the process. Because she is still angry yeah. that the father abandoned her, mm -hmm. she refuses to spend any time with the child mm -hmm. because it reminds her of her failed relationship she had mm -hmm. with the child's father. Yeah. Yeah. Or worse, because she is angry she was pregnant in the first place. She places a newborn child in a dumpster out with the trash. Yes, misplaced anger can be a very dangerous proposition, yeah. to say the least. As a final example of this, we see displaced anger in the massive school shootings that unfortunately we see all over our television sets in these days. It seems like we can't get a break with this stuff. As a lady, not just school shootings, but employment places, everybody 
It's doing it, you know. It was a day, excuse me for saying it this way, but there was a day when I thought black folks didn't do that kind of thing. Amen. Amen. There were some things we used to say as black folks. We don't commit suicide. Yes, we do. We don't do mass shooting. We're not selling kids. Yes, we are. Anything that the society at large do, we play monkey see, monkey do. Amen. And do the same things. Amen, y'all. It is taking over every culture, subculture, whatever you're talking about. These school shootings or, or employment shootings, they happen everywhere yeah. in every racial group on the planet. Now. Yeah. But see, the problem is, I don't care what color the shooter is, but the same mentality goes. The mass shooter is a person who's normally a social outcast in school mm -hmm. or was bullied by somebody. Yeah. However, what doesn't make sense is this. We rarely see the mass shooter is shooting the people who actually bullied him. Right. Huh? Yeah. Typically, they would take the AR-16 assault rifle and shoot up an elementary school yeah. that they have not attended in a decade uh -huh. with an entirely different group of children yeah. or he'll target his high school and kill innocent bystanders yeah. who had nothing to do with the situation yeah. right. to begin with. You see, folks, yes, this place, anger, is a powerful thing. It is a very wicked thing, to say the least, when the fires of this rage are not put out. See, remember, that's why God says, be, uh, be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. Neither give place unto the devil. The devil had you doing all kind of nonsense when you can't control your anger. Am I talking to anybody here yet Man. this morning? But moving on here, here's what I want you to get at here. And this is the spiritual side. Now you see the effects of spiritual negativity. You see the effects of the influence of Satan on the hearts of men. Now let's go back and back up and look at the one who's influencing all this stuff. In other words, please keep in mind that Satan is the real aggressor, as we see from the story of Job. Yeah. Remember from this story, it was Satan that caused the death of Job's children. Huh? He did through the weather. Oh, yeah. And caused the destruction to fall on them. That was Satan yeah. that did that. That was Satan that motivated his wife to say, curse God and die. Huh? That was Satan that afflicted him with balls from his head to his feet. Yeah. That was Satan that killed his servants because he was a very rich man. That was Satan that killed all his livestock, which in those days in agrarian society, that was your wealth. That was like going broke in one day. And that was what? Satan. So what do you see out of Job? What did, did, did Satan produce in his life? He produced emotional stress. He produced marital issues. Oh, do you see it? Yeah. He produced health issues. Huh? He produced wealth issues. Being take away issues. Yeah. Huh? So where do you think all this is originating? God just told you. Where did all these problems, this habit, all these issues issue from? They came from Satan. Yeah. Huh? So with this being known as another example, let me show you something about Judas. Right before he made the deal to betray Jesus with 30 pieces of silver, he truly sold his soul because the Bible says that he went to his own place. In Acts chapter number 2. Now, Acts chapter number two, as Brother Jimmy had talked about earlier, God uses symbols for other stuff. Mm -hmm. Remember, he said, fall in a ditch. Fall in a ditch is hell. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If the blind meet the blind, they both what? Fall in the, in the ditch. That's God's way of describing hell in a nice way. Mm -hmm. Same thing in Acts number two, where he said that uh, 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 he went to, Judas went to his own place. Right. Well, where was everybody else going? Paradise. Where they died. Amen. Amen. So that means there's only one other alternative. He was going to torment. Yeah. He's the only one in the Bible that, to my knowledge, that we know that God judged already yeah. and told you his judgment. Yeah. So, that, that he is going to hell yeah. and he ain't getting out of it. Yeah. Amen. 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 See, that's my, my old Barbie stuff. Oh, I think Judas is saying, What Bible are you reading? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> The Bible said what? He went to his own place. 
So he is going to go to eternal punishment forevermore. Now, well, let's look at this for a moment now. In Luke chapter 22, verse 1 and verse number 6. And let's see who influenced Judas' heart. It reads as follows out of the New King James Version as well. All scriptures are out of that, that version, by the way, as well. It says, now, the feast of unleavened bread drew near, which is called what? Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes saw how they might kill Jesus. Obviously, the enemies of the Lord, right? For they feared the people. In other words, these cowards wouldn't even come in public and get Jesus. Because it would scare people would riot if they took him. Let's keep going. Then Satan, who in it inside? Satan. Also known as the devil. Yeah. Also known as Lucifer. Yeah. Also known as Beelzebub. Also known as the dragon. Yeah. All these names, all these aliases, because he's always committing crimes. Amen, y'all. Okay. So he's got many names, but the same effect, right? Look what it says. Then Satan entered Judas, surname is Scared, who was numbered. Among the twelve, he was an apostle, true apostle. So he went his way and conferred with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him to them. But when did the thought hit his heart? When Satan influenced him, huh? And they were glad and agreed to give him money. Now, let's keep going. So he promised and sought opportunity to betray him to them in the absence. Of the multitude. In other words, to secretly betray Jesus. Amen, y'all. But if you're talking about that now, come on now. Now he this was typical. This was truly the old Jays. He smiled his face for what? He stabbed him in the back. Y'all act like y'all act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Right? You know? But I'm talking about if you knew that song from last week, you know that one too. I know. Amen. Amen. So he was walking with the traitor. Amen. That was just looking for the opportunity. To stab him in the back is why Satan was in his heart. heart. Amen, y'all. Satan was in his heart. And he was the influencer. So again, you see, the influencer was who? Satan. It was Satan who caused Judas to come up with the conspiracy to betray the Lord by delivering him into the hands of his enemies for a fee. Yeah. So yes, he did sell his soul yeah. for money. Yes, the scripture is true that the love of money is the root of all evil. Yeah. With the finger of accusation pointed squarely in the chest of Judas. Yeah. Verse Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. So remember, the same things happen in our lives. Mm -hmm. The havoc in our lives, by which you take this home, is what you need to do to survive as a Christian. The havoc in your life is caused by who? Amen. Satan. So quit saying God did this and God did that when things go wrong in your life. And I'm just talking in general now. God took my job. No, he didn't. Satan took your job. See, y'all must not have never been in no boardrooms where decisions are made. Satan sits right in those boardrooms on your job. You see, I worked for a company years ago. I won't, won't na name their name. But we were making $90 billion in profit and laying off folk. Satan got to be in that. That has to be the love of money. Somebody wanted to pocket a little bit more of that $90 billion in profit. In other words, they want to change that $90 billion to $100 billion. The $110 billion. And now he puts a family on the street. Because you greed. Yeah. Huh? Everything. Don't keep blaming everything on God. It's not God doing these things. It's the adversary. Mm. Satan that's doing these things. So again, I repeat on purpose. The havoc in our lives are spiritually caused by who? Satan. Amen. Sometimes he does it in a stealth way that is a sneaky fashion to cause misery and harm to us. Often he wants us to turn our backs on God. See, he throws the rock and hides behind the bush so that you think that God did it to you. Huh? So if you're going to get angry with somebody, get angry with Satan. Don't get angry with God for things that he's not doing to you. Oh, amen, y'all. Truth is the truth, now. Truth is the truth. 
Satan is the adversary and God is your ally. Right. Don't ever forget that. See, God does not deserve our anger directed at him because he has been too good to us. See, I like watching some of these, these things that, that actually ticks my wife off. I like watching TBN sometimes. I like watching these so-called Christian religious movies that I know are fake. And I know I'm not real. Huh? <laughs> and I love how they always start off. I hate you, God, and put the hand up in the air. I wish you would. <laughs> I wish you would put your hand. Yeah. God can put that hand down and everything else. He can lower you right in the grave. Yeah. But you're raising up against God. Yeah. As if you can say anything that hurt him. Yeah. You can do anything that hurt him. How an ant gonna hurt the Almighty? Yeah. I'm talking about calling us ants. And if you ever notice, they do that all the time. Yeah. Like we got the right to get mad and cuss God and curse God and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I wish you would. Amen, amen. amen. You obviously didn't grow up my father. Amen. amen. <laughs> An earthly father knocked you down. <laughs> Real quick. Oh, amen, y'all. Amen. amen. See, I backed down to my father one time. Because I got, you know, when you get out of your 20s, I'm grown, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell my daddy, you know, you're going to stop this with me. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we both are laying on the couch. He, he, he had just got out of the hospital, so did I. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we at home getting on each other's nerves. Mm -hmm. He laying on one couch, I'm laying on the other couch, and I don't know what we got into or what got in me. I know what it was. It was influence to say, Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't remember what we was arguing about. But I said something, and remember, my dad had just got out of the hospital. And he took the table and flipped it right at me. And he was over me before I could move. Oh, y'all don't get what I'm saying. Man. All I can tell you is thank God for grace and mercy. I wasn't as grown as I thought. I wasn't as fast as I thought. Huh? I wasn't as quick witch as I thought. Now, I remember, this was a very sick man. Yeah. And I don't know where the strength came from. Yeah. Amen. I don't know where the quickness got from. I don't know how he turned over that table and almost hit me with it. I don't know how he got over me. Amen. Yeah. That fast? He just got out of the hospital? Come on now. Something happened when you pick, hit that button on the wrong person. Yeah. I'm just glad he had great opportunity. He had grace and mercy. I'm, about, I'm thinking about 20 years old, home from college, that kind of stuff, and, and just go buck up against me. That was a bad idea. Maybe. Real, real bad idea. But you get the point. You get the point. God can do stuff that you ain't even thought about. You're underestimating him. Big time. When you try to buck up against him. Amen, y'all. You don't have this strength. The box with God. Amen, y'all. Like an old play with your arms too short. The box with God. Amen, y'all. It is the truth. But nonetheless, on a, a, a sensical way of saying this, God does not deserve our anger directed toward him because he's been too good to us. God does not deserve our anger directed toward him because he has been loving to us in extreme ways beyond what man can do for us. And God does not deserve our anger directed toward him because he's being falsely accused by us for things that Satan is actually doing to us. Did that get by you? See, moving on, shortly coming to the close, the truth is told, we must always keep control of our anger at all times and definitely don't try to direct it at God. Remember that I quoted to you, but let me quote it to you directly. Out of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 and verse number 27, again, the Bible says, be ye angry and do not sin. Not notice God can say never be angry because there's stuff that angers God. And we're made in the image of God. You're not human. You're not flesh and blood if you don't get angry from time to time. But God is saying control it. God is saying be angry, but he didn't say be angry and cuss. Huh? He didn't say be angry and get some get back on somebody. Revenge. Huh? He didn't say get angry and get your peace. Mm -hmm. I ain't say P E A C E. <laughs> P I E C E. Amen. Your good. He said what? Be angry and what? Do not Dang. sin. Right. 
Keep it under control. Not only keep it under control, get rid of it as fast as you can. Yeah. That's why he said, do not let the sun what? Go down yeah. on your wrath. Don't you dare take it in the next day. If you're mad on Monday, it better not be the same thing on Tuesday. Yeah. Or Wednesday or years from now. He said, do not let the sun go down on your wrath because you're giving Satan invitation into your heart. Let's keep working with this thing. Now, that's what he's saying. Look at it. He said, nor give place to the devil. Because as long as you stay angry, the more opportunity Satan has to come in and take over. And cause you to do that, which is regrettable, and your light is definitely not shining. At that point, am I talking to anybody here just yet? Amen. Anybody got angry yet? Oh, you angry now? Amen. You take it too long. Oh, you can shut up and get down. Amen. That was somebody, heart. He on my street. I hope you hurry up. Amen. No, no, no. I get it. I get it. But I ain't going to shut up. Amen. Neither give place to the devil, right? You see, anger is not sinful unless it is misapplied. It's misapplied if you bring it into the next day. Anger is misapplied if you have a short temper. Anger is misapplied if you hold grudges. And anger is misapplied when we direct it at the wrong person. Remember, anger can be a bridge into your heart and an invitation for Satan to take control of your mind, causing you to do regrettable things. You must, and here's what we got to take from this lesson here today. You must make it up in your mind not to be a person who gets angry quickly. Ask God to make you easygoing instead. Oh, he can do it. This is one thing we can take from David. Psalm 51, what he say? Lord created me a clean heart. There's nothing against that in the whole or the New Testament. Lord, work on me. Amen, y'all. Keep working on me. When I slip, Lord, please don't give up on me and work with me some more so I don't slip again. Oh, come on now. Amen. I'm being human with you here today and showing you the struggle of this. See, folks, let's get back into this here now. You see, make it up in your mind to be easygoing instead. You must make it up in your mind to not be a person who holds grudges because that makes you a non-forgiving person. Ask God to make you a person that can let it go. You must make it up in your mind not to be a person who will jump to conclusions, but to think things all the way through first. Ask God for wisdom to get these things accomplished. Right. And most of all, vow in your heart to be angry only with the source of your troubles, which is Satan. Mm -hmm. Oh, am I talking to anybody here yet? Yes, so if you're going to get angry with anybody, let it not be your anger, but Satan mm -hmm. instead. If you're going to be angry with anybody, let it not be your God, but Satan instead. And if you're going to blame anyone for your troubles, let it be Satan and ask God to help you defeat him. Because great is he that's in you than he that's in the world. According to the scriptures, 1 John chapter 4, verse number 4. This means that the Holy Spirit that dwells in you, who is also God, is greater than the God of this world, who is Satan. Acts 2, verse 38, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4. Remember, Philippians 4, verse number 13, we almost commercialize this, but don't let it become something that you desensitize when you hear, but believe it and root yourself in Philippians 4, verse 13. What does it say? I can do all things through what? Through Christ who strengthens me. He can get you through it. Amen, y'all. If anybody had the ability and reason to be angry and destroy folks, it should have been Christ. But instead of doing that, what did he do? He tried to save them mm -hmm. instead. See, what's so powerful is when you look at Matthew 26 and 27, and you combine that with Acts chapter number 2, you'll find out that some of the people that were at the crucifixion were also at Pentecost. Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. How do you know this? Because why? When Peter addressed the crowd, he said, you crucified. Huh? You crucified. I'm paraphrasing the Lord of glory. So that means that Christ was willing to forgive, not get anger with, and not destroy the very people that spit in his face. Yes. Do you mean he was willing 
to forgive and let go of any anger that would accumulate in him for folks that slapped him, for folks that beat him with their fists, for folks that whipped him in his back, huh? anywhere else I stay getting, and put nails in his hands and his feet, let him be on that cross for hours and mocked him while he was on the cross. And you still say that he's willing to forgive them and let it go? Yes. That's what the scriptures is teaching us. Do you understand the magnitude of who we serve? Do you understand the patience of the man that we serve? Huh? Do you understand the love of the person we serve? Beyond anything any of us could do in this room. But we still got to strive to be exactly like him. Amen. 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 The question is, are you ready to be like him? You know what I'm going to ask? If I have to ask you that question one-on-one, are you ready for that or not? You know what my answer would be to you? It don't matter. You need to do it anyway. Amen. It ain't a yes or no question. Amen. It's a rhetorical question to get you to think. In about when you're ready, you better start right now. Amen. 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 Because we were built to be what? Imitators of Christ Jesus. We're to take on his personality at all times. Think like he thinks. React like he would react. Love like he would react. Control his temper like he would control his temper. Love like he would love. Yes, that's what we're called to be. Amen, y'all. Mm -hmm. Amen. Is anybody with me here on this here today? Mm -hmm. This is the truth. Is it anybody else can admit that this is not all that easy? Mm -hmm. I hope every last one is. That's, That's why he said what? We can do all things through what? Christ. Right. That strengthens us. That's why he said, watch and pray that you enter not temptation. The spirit is willing, but the what? The flesh <laughs> is weak. You want to ask some help with this. Amen. But the good thing about it in Matthew 28, verse number 20, he said, I'm with you all the way. Even until what? The end of the world. You're not God. Christ, that's what's so beautiful about Christ. He's not going to ask you to do something he has not already done. Nor will he ask you to do something he won't help you get done. At the same time. Oh, amen. I hope I got some soldiers in here that believe the word of God here today. So never say this when it comes to change. Never say, this is who I have always been, so I will not change. Instead of taking on the humility leading to change called denying self that Jesus commanded. Remember, he told us in Luke chapter 9, verse 23, if anyone desires to come after me, let him what? Deny himself and take up his cross daily. You mean I got to control myself daily? Yeah. Just Sunday morning. No. Sunday morning just to start. Huh? Sunday morning. It's just the beginning of your journey. You got to do this through what? Monday through Saturday. Get filled up again on Sunday. Get the energy to do it again. Amen, y'all. <clears throat> and then do it again what? Monday through Saturday. In other words, these are things we're called to all the time. Now, again, he says, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and what? Follow me. Give yourself the benefit of the doubt. You can do it. Again, God won't ask you to do the impossible. He does not set you up for a disaster. He sets you up for success. Amen. That's the God that we serve. But we'll move on. If you got anything out of this here, somebody say amen. amen. If you're going to control your temper, somebody say amen. Amen, amen too. I can't buy it on you, but I'm not going to do it for myself. Amen. amen. We in this thing together. Is that all right, Joe? But most of all, we're not alone because Christ will get us through it. Amen. God bless you. Let's change thoughts and transition to another thought. And that is God's plan of salvation. It's so wonderful that we serve a God with the patience he has with humanity. Almost since very day one, we have rebelled against him in Genesis. To this very day. Amen, y'all. But instead of destroying us, the Bible says in John verse 3, verse 16, he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him shall not perish, but what? Have everlasting life. You see, if I was God, if you were God, I'd have gave up on Adam and Eve. Amen. I'm just telling you the truth. Huh? I would have said, You weak folk, 
I'm going to destroy every last one of you. Amen. And I'm going to start all over. And I'd have created somebody else. Amen. That's just what I would have done. Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. You get tired of your car, you'll go get rid of it. And get another one. Amen. That's how humans would have done it, right? But see, I'm glad we're not God, right? Amen. He still loved us through our imperfections. He still loved us through our betrayals and our rebellion for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Not just collectively, but individually as well. So we got to include ourselves in that. Why do I say this? Romans 3 verse 23, what does it say? For all have sinned and fallen short of the what? Glory of God. What does he say in Romans 6 verse 23? That is basically a confirmation verse of that. He says what? That we have the gift of eternal life through what? Christ Jesus. The ways of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Amen. So he still loved us despite our faults. Amen. Y'all. See, it's like Christ, if we were, were, were cars, we were the cars in the junkyard. He'd rather take the junkyard car all rusted out, busted tail, lights, no, no windshield. He'd rather just go ahead and put a windshield in it. Amen. Restore that body. Huh? Put the headlights and the taillights in it. Amen, y'all. If he had to, he'll drop another transmission in it. See, we got a mechanic. He know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Here today. Amen, y'all. Put a new exhaust in it. He'd rather have an old rust bucket than buy a new Cadillac. Huh? That's how much he loves us. And that's what we really look like. We look at an old rust bucket. We don't like no Cadillac. Amen, y'all. <laughs> we don't. We don't. If you get that, you understand sin. Huh? We don't look very good without Christ Amen. in God's sight. We look toe up from the floor. And I'm talking from a soul standpoint, eternally. But God rather would fix you up than replace you. Oh, ain't that beautiful? Think about it when you think about that. That's how much he loves you. And that's why he said he loved the world, that he gave his what? Only we got his son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have what? Everlasting, Everlasting life. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. I'm not going to be here long, but I want to reason with you for a minute. Be honest with yourself. Have you lived in perfection? Have you ever told a lie? Hmm? I'm keeping it PG now. Have you looked at a woman or a man in the wrong way? Huh? Have you said some regrettable words? Have you ever stole something? Huh? Stop saying yeah. No, I'm learning your business. Stop. <laughs> I'm trying to get your business. Amen. I'm here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have you ever gotten to a violent confrontation with somebody? Did you start it? No. <laughs> I can't say that. I can't say that. <laughs> I'd have been on both sides of that equation. <laughs> both sides. But the point is, if I keep going, I'm going to catch you somewhere yeah. in there. Everything that you know you have done wrong, it will deny you heaven. Mm-hmm. Remember, he said the ways of sin is yeah. death. And remember, it only takes one time doing something to become it. Mm-hmm. I only told one lie once. That was years ago. So you're a liar. Right. If you committed it, the crime, you are what you committed. Right. It don't take but one time. Have you hated somebody in your heart? It don't take but one time to be a hater. You see, all these things will deny you heaven. But see, look at this. Look at this. This is powerful. You can catch this. It takes one time for you to go to hell. And it takes one act for you to go to heaven. I'm talking about Christ. Who died in your place. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. And his blood was so powerful when it was spilled. It covers every sin. Mm-hmm. That you have ever committed. Mm-hmm. When you become a child. Yeah. Of God. That's why I tell people all the time. You're never too clean. or never too dirty. To be cleaned up by the blood of Christ. Amen. Mm-hmm. In other words, there's nothing you have done or have done or are doing that God won't forgive you for when you give your life to Christ without exception. Amen. 
Amen. Because my Bible tells me when anybody's in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. And all things have become new. God gives you not a second chance. He gives you a chance, period. Amen. To change and wipe your slate clean by becoming a Christian. See, there's no system of religion on the planet that makes sense. What I mean by that. You know, when it comes to Islam, you can do more good deeds as opposed to your bad deeds. Oh, well, that ain't going to work. Because I guarantee you, if you evaluate your day, you are doing way more bad deeds than you ever will be doing good deeds to outnumber them. You are never worth it. Scale is tipped not in your favor. So you have to have something that tilts it to your faith. You get where I'm coming from. You got to get rid of sin. Not try to cover it with good deeds. That ain't going to work because you don't have enough to cover it. Hey, amen. Amen. So you have to have something more powerful. I'm talking about the blood of Christ. Because God says the ways of sin is death. In other words, something has to die to satisfy God's demand for justice against sin. That makes sense to you. And Christ was the one that volunteered to fulfill that for you. So he died in your place so that you don't have to face the wrath of God on the judgment day. And God himself, now God was in the plan. Now he gave Christ so that you can have that opportunity. All you got to do is come to him. Before it's everlastingly too late. Amen, y'all. You see, I already know where I'm going if I follow Christ. Then we just uh, read a passage of scripture that said, if any man be my disciple, let him what? Deny himself? Pick up his cross and what? Follow me. Where did he go? Acts chapter number one says, after he rose, he rose back into heaven. I want to follow him. You want to follow him if you have a true, sincere love for Christ. And Jesus said, it's, it's a way of doing that. He said, John 14, verse 1 and verse number 2, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. So where he is is where we're going if we follow him. Peter says it uh, best in Acts chapter number two, that he is now seated at the right hand of God. In other words, he's already there, waiting on us to join him. But he also made this statement in John 14, verse number six. You got to keep reading that chapter. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He's saying, I am the exclusive way. To sit at the right hand of God. I am the exclusive way to be pleasing to God. I am the exclusive way to give you that mansion in heaven. That's promised. You can't get into heaven. You can't be in God's favor without Christ. And follow him directly. So you must accept him. As literally the son of God. He was born of a virgin Mary. Impregnated by no man. But she still had a child. By the miraculous uh, works of God. Who was Jesus. And that also ushered in. His birth was just one of the signs. That he's the son of God. But look at all the miracles he did. Tell me a man. That is able to heal the sick. Tell me a man. That is able to give. Uh, the blind their sight. Tell me a man. That can make a man hear that's deaf. Or make a man that's mute talk. Tell me a man. That can tell Lazarus to come out of the tomb. After he had been dead for four days. How much more evidence do you need. That Jesus Christ is the son of God. Your Lord and your savior. Amen. He can provide no more evidence. Than what he has already provided to you. But you got to accept him as the Lord and savior to be saved. And after you do that you got to accept what he said you must do to be saved. In other words we know faith is necessary. We know that. But he also said repentance is necessary for salvation. Luke 13, 3 and verse 5. Repentance is the, what we just talked about, following him. It means to what? Live the godly Christian life. 
and leave a sinful lifestyle alone. The fourth part of the plan of salvation is what you must say. That is, you must confess Jesus as the Son of God in order to be saved. God requires a confession of us before men. Romans 10, verse 9, verse number 10, Matthew 10, 32 and 33. Other passages of Scripture show us that we must confess Jesus as the Son of God, which means our Lord with our mouth, in order to be saved. We must go down in the water grave of baptism in order to be saved. See, baptism does at least three things. I shouldn't say baptism, but God does things because of baptism. Oh, you catch that. Because of baptism, God will do these things. Mm, maybe people ought to hear it that way. Because remember, Matthew 7, verse 21 says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of God, except for what? He that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. All we have to do is establish the Father's will and do the Father's will, and the Father will do the rest. See, people are, are talking about it all the time. Well, I don't see what the water do for you. You don't have to. Don't see what the water does. See what the Father does after you go in the water. Mm -hmm. See, put it this way. The water makes God react to you. Because now he has to fulfill his promises about the water you went into. Oh, did I lose you there? So what is the promises of when you come out of the water? Acts 22, verse 16. Why tarryest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. You see, when you go in the water, God reacts to you being baptized by what? Washing away your sins. That's God's way of saying, I've cleaned you up, meaning I have forgiven you at that point. Also, when you go in the water, gives God another reaction. God reacts to you going to water in Galatians 3, verse number 27. As I paraphrase, those who have been baptized have been baptized into Christ. Being in Christ is another way of God saying you are part of his family now. You are part of the church, which is the family of God. So what does it do? It causes God to adopt you into his family, also known as the kingdom of God. And it does another thing. It causes God to react as well in salvation for you. Huh? Because Jesus said what? Mark 16, verse number 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. You have to understand God works like this. If you don't obey, God does not react. If you do not obey, God does not forgive. That's the agreement he put in the Bible with mankind. It's called the New Testament. Amen. Amen. And we cannot change it. We don't have the authority to change it. Think about it this way. If you work on a job and you're just like a, I shouldn't use that word, but if you're just a, if you're just a low-level worker like me, let me put it that way. We like to say peons and all that stuff. I ain't want to insult nobody. Amen, y'all. But if you're a low-level worker like me, can you just walk in your, in your uh, place of employment and change the way that operation works? Huh? Can you just walk in your job, being a low-level person like I am, right? And you will go in there and say, no, I want to change the work day. I don't want to come in 9 to 5. I want it to be 7 to 4. Do you think... <laughs> These people are going to react to you? Oh, they will. <laughs> yes, they will. They'll roll you out the door. Huh? You'll be fired. Because why? You don't have the authority to change the policy and procedures of the place where you work at. And if you don't have the authority to change it and they fire you, you can't have your paycheck. You can't have heaven if you're trying to change what God said. So forgive me for what I'm going to say. Joel Osteen has no authority to change God's plan of salvation and say, pray your way to heaven. Mm -hmm. It ain't in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Huh? T.D. Jakes teaches the same thing. Pray yourself into heaven. Mm -hmm. Joyce Myers says the same thing. She'll tell folk, pray your way into heaven. 
Huh? We can keep naming names. And it's not to insult these folks. I'm just showing you the lies. Folk tell that have no authority to change God's word. They don't own the kingdom of God, meaning the church. And they don't own heaven. Amen. So they can't tell you nothing about what it takes to be saved. Amen, y'all. Truth is the truth. So again, let me break it down quickly and simply for you. To be saved, you got to hear the word of God, which you've done. Let's talk about Jesus being your Lord and Savior. You've got to believe it. You also have to repent of your sins. You have to confess Jesus as the Son of God. You must be baptized for the forgiveness of your sin and the salvation of your soul. Then you have to do the work of the Christian. That's what he says. After you become a Christian, Jesus says what? Revelation 2, verse number 10. Be thou what? Faith unto death. And what? He will give thee a crown of life. That's the part about what? Following him. Keep believing, obeying him to the end. And heaven's going to be your home. If you're a child of God, you'll walk this way. And I know it's not going to make no friends, but you've been missing worship service. That's sin. You need to repent. And be consistent. Amen, y'all. Amen. You need to make your confession. That I've been missing worship service. I ain't had no reason to be missing it. i just been lazy. Truth is the truth, y'all. Or I've been preoccupied with this. I've been preoccupied with that. Well, you put everything above Christ. You can't do that. That's sin. That's sin. That's not what? Denying self. Picking up your cross and what? Following him. You said some things that are off color, if you will. You're going to say it nicely. It's time to what? Repent. Huh? If you're not doing what's right in any way, it's time to what? Repent. Repent. And for, in church, can I say this too? And I'm going to sit down. Don't judge them when they do. Don't judge them when they do. Sometimes folk go ahead, go and get influenced by Satan. But they repent now. Nah, I ain't going to see them next week. That ain't your business to say. That ain't your business to think. You need to be rebuking and Satan in your head saying, get, me, get thee behind me, Satan. I'm supposed to be like that father and the prodigal son. I'm supposed to embrace them. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'm supposed to celebrate them. Yeah. Huh? But what if they got this big scandal out in the public? So what? So what? They got caught and you didn't. You probably did the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me cut that out. Let me cut that out. But it is the truth, though, ain't it? Yeah. It is the truth. Don't judge nobody. Be happy that they came back. Amen. Celebrate that they came back. Because what? God's son was lost. Now he's what? He's found. He was dead. Now he's alive. Now he's alive. With that being said, though, if you have done something disorderly, uh, as a Christian, it's time to get back uh, right with God by what? Repentance, confession, and prayer. You see, again, that in Acts 8, verse 22, and 1 John 1, 7, and verse number 10. So we're just going to call our song leader up as we typically do, because this we're reserving some time for you. We're, we're conserving this time out of compassion and reserving this time to say, look, come on home. Mm -hmm. Or if you haven't become a Christian, come on down. All I'm going to do is ask you, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? If you say yes, if you confirm it, we go down to water grave of baptism for the forgiveness of your sin and the salvation of your soul. Won't you come? Let's all stand. Let's stand and honor them. As we sing the Lord's invitation. Won't you come back together? We stand and we sing. Why do you wait, dear brother? Oh, why do you tarry so long? Your Savior is waiting to give you a place in his sanctified throne. Why?
Well, we appreciate the message from Brother Noah Wood. Amen. You know, I think he spoke the truth and we should always be willing to uh, obey the truth. Amen. But at this time, we're going to pray. <coughs> Let us pray. <clears throat> the eternal God of Heavenly Father, we come this morning just thanking you for another day. To, Another day to come to fellowship one with another and to sing praises unto you, to be engaged in this worship service. Father, we're just so grateful for each person that's here today. We ask your blessing upon each person that's, that came out today, and we just pray that you will help us to keep on keeping on and realizing, Heavenly Father, it's necessary for us to encourage one another along the way. And we just pray, Father, that you will be with those who uh, uh, who did not see fit to be here today. We pray that you help them to understand the need to come together and on a regular basis, Father. We just pray that you would help all of those who've been away for some time for uh, reasons that are not justifiable to see the need to come back and recommit themselves to the, to the Lord. We thank you for food, clothing, and shelter, Lord, and we just ask that you would uh, continue to bless us. We pray also for those who have not, those who are suffering at this time, those who are brokenhearted, downtrodden. We just pray that you give them a solution to the problem, Father, and we know that you are the solution to it. We pray that you would help us to help those who are in need, those who are we are struggling. We pray that you will help us to be compassionate people, always having all men best interests at heart. Yes. We've been praying this morning for those who are sick and afflicted everywhere. We pray that pray for Brother Byers who has some issues this morning. Pray that you bless him, yeah. and pray that you bless Sister Hooks who's been out for some time with health issues. We pray that you will help her to overcome. Pray also for the sister Diane Tierra. Pray your blessing upon her and let's pray that all will be well with her. And pray also for Sister Townsend who's been hospitalized. We pray that you help her to continue to improve and pray that things will be well with her and that she'll be back home doing better. Amen. And we pray also for Sister Bruce. We pray that you be with her and help her health issues. Bless her and help her to overcome as well as Brother and Sister Walker, who's been ill for quite some time, we pray your blessing upon them. And Brother Kenneth Densmore, who's had surgery for several different times, we pray that you would be with him in his struggle. We pray that you would allow him to have a full recovery. We pray also for Gaston Lodge. We pray that you be with him during his upcoming procedures. And pray that all will be well with him. We pray for the doctors and nurses who take part in his care. Yeah. And pray for Shirley Jackson, Sister Shirley Jackson and her family. Pray that you bless them with the blessing that they stand in need of. And not only them, Father, we pray for the entire country that you would help us to be a more loving people here. And, and we pray that you would help us to always be a good example of what the Lord want us to be. Yes. And we pray, Father, for those who are on the outside of the body, those who have heard the word but have not obeyed the gospel yes. yet. Yeah. Pray that you will help them to see the need to obey before it's eternally too late. Yeah. And Father, this going beyond this country, but in foreign lands as well. We know that different individuals have different uh, problems, but yet they have problems. We pray specifically for Nigeria, who has new leadership there at this time. We pray that you will help them to have the best, the, the, the people best interest at heart. Yes, and we yeah. pray especially for the individuals that we help to support to do evangelistic work. Yes. We pray that you will help them, help them to continue to be successful, but we pray for them and their personal lives as well, that all will be well with them. Yeah. And we pray, Father, that you will uh, let's help this country be a more loving and peaceful country. We pray for uh, the violence that takes place here, where people are killing people without no regard for human life. And we just pray, Father, that this kind of behavior will cease. 
We pray for our schools and teachers and students as well. We pray that the schools will be a safe place. And we pray that you help the students to do their very best in school in order that they may make preparation for the future. And we just pray, Father, that you will be with us in this on this pilgrim journey. Forgive us of our sins and when life here should be no more. We pray that a home in heaven will await us. Yes. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verses 1 and 2 where the Apostle Paul wrote not concerning the collection for the saints as I have given the order to the church of the Galatia even so be you. On the first day of the week let everyone you live by him and store as God has promised him that there be no gatherings when I come. If you stand in need of giving your offering on this morning please raise your hand at this time. Say a word of thank you, Lord. Dear God, we thank you for the blessings that you have immensely poured upon us, and we thank you for um, this uh, financial offer that has been given on this morning. We pray that it was given in a fashion that's pleasing to you, and Lord, we pray that it be used in the wisest manner possible. It's in your Son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I gave my life for thee, to my bread. The blood I shed, that I might ransom thee.
After the same manner, he also took the cup when they stuff saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and eat this cup, ye do show the Lord's death until he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be given to the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. So let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh that nation to himself, not discern the Lord's body. For this caused men a weak and sickly among you, and men see. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for your son Jesus and for the sacrifice that he made for us. And we thank you for this fruit of the vine which represents his blood. And we pray that as we partake of it, that we will do so thinking about your son's sacrifice for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. There are a couple of things we would like to mention. Uh, you know, some time ago, or a couple of, well, maybe a couple of months ago now, we mentioned the idea of having someone to come in and talk about uh, CPR. And every, most of the people here agreed that they would like to participate in that, and like to see it done. But next, uh, next set, next. Sunday, after worship service, we have a lady coming from UAB to, to uh, show us something about uh, CPR, teach us something about CPR. You know, if you had the course before, you need to go through it again. You know, this is according to Brother Vanderbilt, you know, the lady came, supposed to be coming through here. If you hear something to the contrary, and we will inform you of that. But if you can stay out the worship service next Sunday, the surgeon would appreciate it. You never know when you may need to use CPR, you know. Today may be the day for you to demonstrate your love for, uh, for humanity. You know? So we need everybody to be prepared. You know, people that usually do CPR don't, don't be expecting to do it on, on that day. It's just something that happens suddenly. And, you know, we saw what happened to the football player, DeMar Hamlin, back here during the football season. That uh, they saved his life, you know, because there were people there who was able to administer CPR. And that's been the case, uh, you know, in a lot of different cases. They were just having to be on national TV, but that happens from time to time. And it may be the one that needs CPR one day. You want somebody to be there to, to help you. <clears throat> so if you can stay next next Sunday, the surgeon I would appreciate it. You may have a drink for you and a, and a snack before you, you know, that you're supposed to be here between at 12.15 and 12.30. So, and, and, and then again, another thing to the men. <clears throat> We are planning to have a, a day for men the first Sunday in, in April, the first Saturday in April, sorry. We would like for everybody to be here on that day that can possibly be here. Amen. A men day, a day of encouragement, or whatever you want to call it. But we feel that it's necessary to bring men together to help encourage them on, on that day. On that day, we will have lunch for them, for every man. So that's the plan. <clears throat> but we need some ladies to help us as well. We've already spoke, Brother D. And also, uh, Dorothy Day is scheduled for uh, May 13th. All right, yeah, May 13th, Dorothy Day. Make preparation to come out and 
and help uh, pass out some clothes, bring clothes. I guess that's what it's all about. Bring, got some already, I think. You bring some you're not wearing or don't intend to wear, but you're good enough to give away. And it'll certainly be appreciated. So if you keep that in mind, if you don't have anything planned for the first Saturday in April, please plan to be here, inviting other people to come. You know, when other people come to your house, you like to, you like to be home when they come. So, Amen. so at, that, at this time, you know, I don't have any other announcements or nothing that I can think of. So please stand for the closing hymn of benediction. In the world is not my home.